Good afternoon, everybody. This afternoon, I am joined by His Excellency the Governor. I am joined by the Minister of Health, the Minister of National Security, and Dr. Charita Bazin from the Mid-Atlantic Wellness Institute. I will give a brief update. I will turn over to the Minister of Health to discuss te uh, testing items. Then uh, His Excellency the Governor will speak on uh, the shipment from the United Kingdom and the flight that is coming in. The Minister of National Security will then provide an update on the operational matters regarding the shelter-in-place order. Um, and then finally, uh, Ms. Bazin will discuss, oh, sorry, Dr. Bazin uh, will discuss matters dealing with um, our health and well-being during this time. I would like to preface my COVID-19 update today with some good news. News that reassures us that in the midst of this crisis, there are many people in private businesses in our community demonstrating kindness and compassion. They are doing things to better our lives. I would like to publicly acknowledge the kindness and compassion of one of our good corporate citizens. Earlier today, I received an email from Ms. Judy Gonzalez, Division President of Chubb Bermuda. Chubb has generously supported the needs of frontline essential health care services by funding the monthly for Twizzies to help essential personnel who do not have transport to get to and from work. They have donated $52,000 to the Bermuda Hospital's Charitable Trust Foundation to assist with the purchase of additional equipment, including ventilators. I would also like to recognize the generosity of PwC Bermuda, who early this week made a donation of $50,000 to the Bermuda Community Foundation Emergency Fund and have committed to providing surplus laptops to the Bermuda public school system. Since the start of COVID-19 in the pandemic, Bermudians have seen their lives adjusted, disrupted, and changed in ways that we could have never imagined just a few months ago. Social distancing, a concept many of us have never heard before, has now become the new norm in social interaction, and many of us have seen jobs and or incomes disappear. Today, I can confirm that there are no new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Bermuda to report at this time, as there are no additional test results received by the Ministry of Health. There are 33 outstanding tests. Out of the 35 confirmed cases, 14 persons have fully recovered and four remain hospitalized in stable condition. At this time, the Minister of Health will provide further details on the testing that is taking place and additional supplies of which we're expecting to bolster our testing regime. Minister. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as we enter into the next 14 days, I want to echo the sentiments that the Premier has expressed today and uh, over the last couple of days of reassurance and remind the community that we are all in this together and we are all facing hardships of some kind in the days ahead. But the price to pay if we do not adhere to the advice of the medical community and the World Health Organization is far too, bear for us to, uh, is far too great of a price for us to bear. We only get one chance to do this right and to stop the virus in its tracks and to ensure that our health system is not overwhelmed in order to save our lives. We, if we go into this half-heartedly, then we put our own lives and our lives of our family members at risk. Businesses and restaurants will remain closed longer, and our economy will take a greater hit, and families will continue to be apart. The health of our community is in your hands, so please be compliant. Isolate immediately if you have any type of respiratory symptoms. Call your doctor, and please stay at home. Another point that I want to stress is specifically for those individuals with chronic illnesses. Please manage your chronic condi condition so that you do not run into complications during this next period of 14 days. Take your medications and comply with your doctor's instructions fully so that you don't need additional care or hospitalization over the next two weeks. Also, I want to remind the public that the doctor's offices are exempt from the impending movement restrictions. Doctor's offices will not be closed, although some may be operating with restricted hours of services. So if you need to speak to your doctor, call ahead, as we've advised previously, and um, continue to follow the orders of the doctor because we don't want our emergency rooms to be flooded and overwhelmed. International guidance supports the option that maternal health, 
child services, immunization services, acute illness visits, and chronic disease management are services which should continue in circumstances such as what we are encountering. This brings me to the modified clinic services at the Hamilton Health Clinic during the next two weeks. The public are advised that there will be no walk-ins at this time and all visits will be by appointment only for essential care. For minor ailments for children as well as child and adult immunizations, contact 278-6460. Appointments will be made available Monday to Friday at the Hamilton Clinic between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. And again, it's no walk-in clinics. Please call ahead for an appointment. And this is for essential care only. Well infant checks will take place on Mondays to, from Monday to Friday at 2 p.m. until 4 p.m. at the Hamilton Health Clinic by appointment only, and the contact number is 278-6460. And for the maternal health program, contact 278-6441. Again, all visits are by appointment only. Antinatal visits will be on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings from 8.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And immunizations will take place on Friday mornings from 8.30 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. Contraceptive injection clinic appointments will also be on Tuesdays from 8.30 until 11.30 and Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And for the communicable disease clinic, contact 278-6442. Testing will be carried out again by appointment only from Monday to Thursdays from 8.30 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. while consultation and medication collection will take place on Fridays from 8.30 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. And again, this is all by appointment only. And for community health nursing services, contact 2923095. Turning now to testing capacity. With the generosity of Roche, Bermuda's supply of two additional testing instruments, PCRs, along with two laptop operating systems to run them will be um, added to the additional capacity to conduct tests here in Bermuda, and we are anticipating that those um, machines will be arriving next week on the BA flight. This will heavily ramp up our testing program as we will be looking to add to our current testing uh, capabilities to offer more widespread testing and screening of our population to combat this viral outbreak of COVID-19. And with the additional testing supplies that again are scheduled to arrive next week on the BA flight, we will be able to test approximately 2,000 more persons. An additional, additional testing center will also be set up and validated according, according to the World Health Organization guidelines. And this is not only to assist the national diagnostic image diagnostic efforts of uh, uh, diagnosing the COVID-19 and doing the testing, but this is also a great opportunity to expose our Bermudian University students who are already educated in this field and have previous laboratory experience so that they will be able to um, emerge in this field of work. And we are really excited because this new laboratory will be under the direction of our own Dr. Karika Weldon, and the new machines, as I spoke about, as well as the test kits, will arrive Monday on the BA flight. And again, it'll have an opportunity to test over 2,000 individuals. So I also want to pause for a moment, and notwithstanding that the Premier has thanked a number of individuals and agencies and community partners, but I also want to extend a warm thank you to the team at the Ministry of Health who have been working tirelessly over the past 12 weeks to ensure that the impact of COVID-19 to our islands is minimized as much as possible. My staff really have been working very long hours, evenings, weekends, without a break to do all of this work. And we have stressed also that social distancing is continuing to be important and vital in containing COVID. And I want to remind everyone that to reduce the risk of COVID and the spreading of it in grocery stores in particular, the below recommendations should be implemented. Again, maintain physical separation of six feet from other shoppers. Use store hand sanitizers as you're entering in and leaving the store. Avoid cash transactions as much as possible and use delivery options if available. And if you bring your own reusable bags, sanitize them first. Pack your own groceries so that fewer hands have touched your purchases and only buy what you need. And finally, if you have the responsibility of caring for vulnerable persons in your own homes, there are several actions that you need to take immediately to protect yourself as well as those persons that you care for, care for to lower the risk of COVID-19 from spreading. And this includes 
practicing safe, effective hygiene for the protection of your client, the caregiver, as well as yourself, staying at home if you are sick, and preparing a plan for backup care providers for times when you are not well. This is because seniors, healthcare workers, and persons with chronic medical conditions like heart, lung, or kidney disease, diabetes, excuse me, are at a higher risk for illness from COVID-19 disease. So please look at the guidelines that will be posted on the government website for full details. And again, I thank you all, and I thank Bermuda, and I'm hoping and praying that we all remain safe and adhere to the guidance that's coming from the World Health Organization and other international bodies. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister of Health, and I would like to echo the comments from the Minister of Health with the thanks to the team inside of the Ministry of Health for all of their incredibly, uh, incredible dedicated work. Uh, members of the media should note that you've been used to these press conferences which are taking place, but because the Ministry of Health has been doing so much work, I'm going to um, make sure that our next press conference will not be until Monday. So while we actually start the shelter in place, there might be a little bit of rest and relaxation for the uh, very, I would say, overworked team at the Ministry of Health. There, you're busy preparing reports for me on a daily basis to keep us updated, but I think that we all need to make sure we have some uh, downtime to recollect ourselves, as the minister always reminds us that this is a marathon and not a sprint, and we will be dealing with this viral, uh, this viral uh, outbreak for some time. Um, Government House and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office have been working with the Government of Bermuda's London Office and the Ministry of Health to bring back stranded Bermudian students and residents in addition to procuring additional supplies. His Excellency the Governor will now speak more about this flight, which is confirmed for Monday, and the support from Public Health England. Ishi. Thank you, Premier. Let me start by saying that I can confirm that I have today signed the regulations which provide for sheltering at home and they have been published on the Government of Bermuda official gazette. And this means that in addition to the nighttime restrictions which were previously put in place, people are required from tomorrow morning to stay at home during the day for the next 14 days except for essential visits to permitted businesses, for example grocery stores and pharmacies, or to go for essential hospital visits or for permitted daily exercise. I recognise the effect that this will have on normal daily life, and as the Premier has already said, that people will need to dig deep. And after landing in Bermuda, we'll then go on to the Cayman Islands, the Bahamas and back to London. The cost of the flight was set at £500 or $620 Bermudian dollars for each passenger. And I expect the flight to be carrying around 140 Bermudian residents. Places on the flight have been allocated in conjunction with the Bermuda Government Office in London. I give thanks for their assistance in this matter. And priority has been given to the elderly, to young persons who need in due course to return to their families, to meet their loved ones who are arriving on the flight. The airport will not be open to the general public. The important thing to remember is your loved ones will be back on the island, staying in a safe place, and will be with you soon. Face many challenges, I continue to support the government and the people of Bermuda in all their continuing efforts, and I pledge all that I can do to help to find a way through. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. The Ministry of National Security, our Bermuda Police Service, and the Royal Bermuda Regiment have played a critical role in helping our community to preserve law and order throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. I now call upon the Minister of National Security to provide an update on the implementation of the shelter-in-place order. As we've heard, the shelter in place commences 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, ostensibly after 8 p.m. tonight, we will be in a curfew for four, excuse me, we will be in shelter in place for 14 days, and this time period will be reviewed and may be extended. 
The overall goal of the shelter in place is to restrict the transfer of COVID-19 by managing unnecessary social movement. Here are some key elements of the, social, of the shelter in place. Limited movement will only be allowed during the day for essential tasks. Persons must remain on their properties during the shelter in place period. Lengthy departure from the property can only be for the purchase of groceries or essential medications. During the times of essential movement, everyone must practice social distancing. As a note, purchase of groceries should be performed by one member of the household to minimize social interaction. Groceries should, not be, should be brought for a period no longer than seven days. Individuals purchasing in bulk or buying excessively will be challenged and potentially will not be able to purchase. Groceries should only be purchased at the nearest available store to the family home. Regarding exercising, working out or walking pets, persons are permitted to exercise on their property and they can venture out on foot for, more than, for no more than a half a mile from their properties and for no more than 60 minutes per day. If you are exercising, you can only be in groups, in groups of two. To be clear, public beaches, public parks, and public playgrounds are all closed. Again, these are the essential services permitted to operate during the state of emergency. Social media, cable companies, and newspapers, and interpreters. Alphabet International is provided to Skyport and their contracted agencies. Balco. Dock workers uploading and unloading cargo ships, including the trucking regime that supports the aforementioned. Licensed private security guards, funeral services and funeral directors, Ministry of Public Works Waste Management, Water Treatment Plant, and all supporting departments and contractors for collection, storage, treatment, and disposable disposal of waste, sewage, and garbage. Telecommunications providers, including cell carriers, and radio communications that are only for emergency services. Regular in-store services are suspended and are for emergency call-out services only. Utility companies, gas and water, they are also only available for emergency call-outs. Fuel distributors, gas stations, but there must be social distancing of six feet practiced in and outside of the store. Licensed fishermen, licensed commercial farmers engaged in agricultural livestock, food distributors and supermarkets, authorized government shelters, critical cleaning services and sanitation workers. As a reminder, here are the key instructions under the shelter in place guidelines. This may be repetitive, but we want to make ourselves crystal clear. As of 8 p.m. tonight, all restaurants must be closed. There should be no takeout service during the 14-day shelter in place. Churches are closed. F funerals should be conducted in cemeteries with a maximum of 10 mourners. Weddings are suspended. No social gatherings whatsoever. The general public are not permitted in areas designated as quarantine centers or homes where persons are under self-quarantine breach of that, the Emergency Powers COVID-19 Regulations 2020 can lead on conviction to a fine of $10,000, six months imprisonment, of, or both a fine of $10,000 or six month imprisonment. Prisons are closed to visitation. Visitation to senior citizens' homes are not permitted. There is no visitation at the hospital at end-of-life visits. Again, the public should remain within the areas of their pro properties other than for specified travel above for the period of the community measures. To be clear, under the Emergency Powers Act, mandatory closures include bars and clubs, beauty salons, spas and barbers, cinemas, concert halls and theaters, golf courses, gyms and other sport clubs, restaurants including takeaway delivery services, 
services, except providing food service in support of a charitable feeding program. Retail stores, except for permitted businesses, swimming pools and hotels, guest houses, and vacation rental properties. I will now share some key operational guidelines as it specifically relates to the movements to grocery stores, pharmacies, and gas stations. Grocery stores, pharmacies, and gas station visits will be done on specific days according to your surname. Last names beginning from A to K, your days for going to the grocery store, pharmacies, and gas stations are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Again, last names from A to K, your days for going to grocery stores, pharmacies, and gas stations are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If your last name starts with L to Z, your shopping days for pharmacies, grocery stores, and gas stations are Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Sundays are reserved for our senior citizens. Senior citizens are anyone commencing at the age of 65 years and above. A senior can go on any day that corresponds with their last name, but remember, specifically, Sunday grocery shopping is set aside for seniors. Please note that only one householder is allowed to travel for groceries. No children should accompany any individual. Persons must have a valid ID or a utility bill can be presented. All forms of ID must have your full name so that your name can be checked and your name can be verified. If you do not meet the criteria, you will be turned away and, the police, and if the police are intended, in attendance, may, they may consider enforcement action against you as you are travel, traveling outside your permitted period. Lastly, I would like to share the operational plan for the Bermuda Police Service and the Royal Bermuda Regiment. It is critical to note that during the shelter in place, it is illegal to enter the house of any person that is not your own home, and it is illegal for you to allow any other persons to visit your home. Breach of the emergency powers COVID-19 regulation 2020 will lead to a fine of $10,000, six month imprisonment, or both a fine of $10,000 or six months imprisonment. The Bermuda Police Service and the Royal Bermuda Regiment will be working together 24 hours a day for the next 14 days. Community advisory points will be in place at multiple locations across the island. All vehicles and pedestrians will be stopped to ensure that the travel is permitted. Those who are, who are found not to be traveling with these regulations will be directed to return home. Re repeat infringement will result in arrest. Arrest could lead on the emergency powers, COVID-19 regulations 2020, to a $10,000 fine or six months imprisonment and both a fine of $10,000 or imprisonment of six months. Rolling checks will take place by police patrol vehicles to ensure that outdoor activity is being conducted within the required boundary of your home. Or on, and remember, you have to be on foot for up to a half of a mile from your residence. Police officers will stop the public to ask the details, including their home address, to ensure compliance. Police and regiment officers will be present at the grocery stores to ensure compliance to the government guidelines as to access. Persons found outside of their properties at night, night unless exempt for a legitimate reason, they will, be they will be subject to arrest and under the emergency powers COVID-19 regulation 2020 will, on conviction will face a fine of $10,000, six months imprisonment or a fine of both a fine of $10,000 and six months imprisonment. Finally, with reference to exemption requests, we have had over 
2,000 requests for exemptions. The team are working flat out. If you have received a response to our notifications, please stand by. Future applications should be sent to coronavirus.gov.bm. In emergency cases, critical services at gov.bm. Please do not apl ap uh, apply twice. If you do so, it slows down the process. Our intent is to keep Bermuda safe, and we need your help to, by staying home to minimize the spread of this virus. The more applications granted, the less likely we are to achieve this. It is safe to note that in very rare and exceptional cases, we will be, be granting any exception under the, under the legislation. Thank you, Minister Keynes, and I'd like to extend the thanks of Bermuda to Minister Keynes, his team at National Security, and the COVID-19 EMO, the Bermuda Police Service, and the Royal Bermuda Regiment for their service uh, during this difficult time. Many of our fellow Bermudians were already facing tremendous stress before the COVID-19 pandemic. We recognize that the past few weeks of uncertainty, reduced incomes, and the inability to move freely around our island during the evenings have added to that stress. The 14 days of shelter in place will be difficult for many of us. Support has been put in place to help families during this difficult time. And at this time, I'd ask for Dr. Sharita Rayner of the Mid-Atlantic Wellness Clinic to speak on how we can each cope with the shelter in place requirements and the resources available to assist if at any point any of us need additional help and support. Dr. Rayner. Good evening. In an effort to continue to provide appropriate mental health services and limit client presence on the Mid-Atlantic Wellness Institute campus, services are being offered in modified ways. Regarding adult mental health, MWI is providing individual appointments through telemedicine, which may include telephone communication, or in cases of need, they will conduct home visits as appropriate. MWI will be providing their clients' medications via home visits or medics to limit the need to come to the campus. Teams are going into the community daily, split between East Teams, West Teams, and Central Teams. Medication is also being delivered to clients who call the acute community mental health services. In a mental health emergency, please contact the crisis line at 239-1111, and you will be given direction. If clients have other concerns, please contact Acute Mental Health Services at 249-3432. This is the clinic triage nurse who now has extended hours of 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. during this COVID crisis. The after hours resource line is 249-3258. MWI clients who in the emergency shelter will also have the benefit of staff administering, administering their medications as needed. Trained nursing staff, community support workers, and addiction counselors are being rotated to the shelter to ensure continuity of services and provide support. Regarding child and adolescent services, clients in the outpatient service are receiving telehealth via numerous platforms, a community support line has been established for children and parents, and the number for this line is 249-3370. If you have an emergency, please call the Child and Adolescent Services main line from Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. This number is 239-6344. If a crisis arises after 5 p.m., please call the Mid-Atlantic Wellness Institute crisis line. Again, the number is 239-1111. There remains on site at Child and Adolescent Services a team who is able to address any emergencies. Regarding our turning point services, counselors remain in regular contact with their clients via the telephone. Our own call counselor also remains available for our clients who need uh, counseling after hours. New referrals for intake are being triaged via telephone. 
please call 239-2038 if, if an intake appointment is needed and to schedule an interview. Client medication needs have been addressed. During times of national emergency, people can experience various levels of mental health concern. This may include general stress, increased anxiety, increased depression, which can lead sometimes to increased substance use. As we are now facing the need to shelter at home to protect our community, we need to be more aware of our emotional response. There are some simple steps that we can take to ensure our emotional wellness during this time. Maintain a positive relationship and social connection with your loved ones. Using services such as Skype, WhatsApp video, or Zoom are excellent ways to maintain this connection. Even the telephone. Try to avoid situations that cause added stress. Structure your day. So get out of your pajamas in the morning. If you're working from home, set up a dedicated workspace. If you are working from home, set off a knock-off time as you would if you were going into the office so that you can differentiate your work time from your home life. Remind yourself that this period will eventually end. This will not last forever. Stay connected to accurate and reliable information, and this can help in reducing anxiety. Sometimes it's important to take breaks from the news media and social media to allow ourselves that opportunity to debrief from those experiences. If sheltering with family, plan fun activities. Create a roster to complete household chores and try to find time where each person can spend alone time to gather their thoughts. It is important to monitor your emotional health and reach out for support as needed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rayner. Uh, now I'm going to give a few uh, closing remarks while actually covering uh, topics of um, a emerging homemade mask industry in Bermuda, um, the flights, uh, repatriation flights for persons from the United uh, States, and closing comments. Uh, just as a note on uh, an update from the Ministry of Public Works that the public uh, drop-off at Times Bay will close for two weeks beginning at 7 p.m. tonight. Remember, the objective of sheltering in place is for people to stay at home as much as possible. Regular trash collection will continue, but the objective is for persons to stay at home. Um, two weeks ago, Ms. Sheila Tyrrell wrote me to suggest that we could help ourselves by producing our own face masks. As a sewer herself, she started this initiative with the intention to provide masks for her family and friends, and later decided to get the government on board with the idea of having persons making masks locally. The idea is that this is an open community initiative to get people to be creative and make some really cool masks for their immediate households and friends and possibly others. A team comprising of Ms. Tyrrell, her daughter Keisha, and two ministry officers, Ms. Georgette Trott and Ms. Trina Bean, have been leading this initiative. The message is that we are all in this together and to encourage the people of Bermuda to make masks for their friends and families. The masks can be made from items already at home, such as old bed sheets, pillowcases, to t-shirts, as long as they are 100% cotton. There are some places where they require a mask to be worn by persons outdoors. And though the science is emerging in, in what we would encourage persons if they do have masks and if they are going out uh, on their shopping items during the week, that they should look to wear them. To be clear, masks will not protect you from, correct, from con contracting or receiving the coronavirus. What masks will do is if you happen to be an asymptomatic spreader, will prevent you from possibly spreading those to other persons. And I think that's an important distinction. Wearing a mask does not mean that you should not wash your hands, should not mean that you should not use hand sanitizer. You should do it in addition to all the other things of which you are currently doing. There are how-to videos online on how to make the mask, and we are going to post one to the website coronavirus at gov. Sorry, coronavirus .gov.bm should budding seamstresses wish to try their hand at making them. Also, while doing this research, the team discovered that there is a thriving cottage industry in Bermuda already where several seamstresses have been making and selling masks for weeks. 
We have some examples on display this afternoon, and you will readily see that there are some very creative and colorful examples. So far, we have identified four entrepreneurs who have sold hundreds of masks already, and we are sure that there are others who are doing so. We are happy to provide their contact details for those who may not have access to a sewing machine or a family member who knows how to use one, and those will be posted to the government website. But those are uh, Ms. Gay Simmons at Keija Fabrics, Mr. Carl, Ms. Carla Souza at Revive Boutique, Dr. Dina Phillips, and Ms. Gina Flood at All Things Sassy. Yes, we are entering into a period of sheltering in place, but I'll be speaking to the Minister of National Security to figure out how we can make sure that we can get an exemption so that persons may be able to provide these masks at supermarkets during uh, our shelter in place. And Mr. Trevor Lindsay gave a nice green one for me. Thank you, Trevor. The Ministry of Tourism and Transport advises that Travel Edge, working with the Bermuda government and the U.S. Consulate and Delta Airlines, has arranged for Bermudian residents and U.S. nationals to be flown home. At 10 a.m. on Tuesday, the 7th of April, a charter flight will depart from Fort Lauderdale, Florida Hollywood International Airport, bound for Bermuda. The flight is then scheduled to depart Bermuda for Atlanta, Georgia, later that day. There will be additional information released this evening from the government on this charter flight. However, tickets are currently priced at $1,000. Bermuda residents in the United States who ordinarily reside on the island and U.S. nationals in Bermuda who wish to return home are advised to take advantage of this opportunity and book this flight directly with Travel Edge. Please contact Pat Trot at pat.trot at traveledge.pm or call 2 Nine nine eight seven one seven, and as noted, there will be a release from the government that is going to go out on that this evening, which will provide that particular information. Um, as I had stated previously, there is not any regular scheduled air traffic, commercial air traffic, out the airport during the month of April. So, if you're a U.S. citizen who would like to return to the United States, or if you are Bermudian who is looking to Bermuda resident who is looking to return home to Bermuda then please take advantage of this flight. As a reminder, you will be required to be in a government quarantine facility for four days upon arrival. And we have been informed that Delta Airlines will not let anyone board the flight who is experiencing, um, exhibiting symptoms of uh, the coronavirus. Before I end, I want to encourage everyone that for accurate and reliable information on COVID-19, please use the government communications channels as your source. In addition to the website coronavirus.gov.bm, the official social media channels, CITV, either on YouTube or on your televisions at home, the government of Bermuda has created a WhatsApp broadcast system where you can send a message to subscribe for information to be delivered directly to your phone. To sign up, all you need to do is WhatsApp HI to 504-6045 and add the number, that number to your contacts list. Since this communications channel have launched, 1,500 Bermudians have subscribed and are receiving direct updates from the government of Bermuda. In closing, as a government, we have approached this pandemic, not from a place of wishful thinking, nor from a place of fear. We have recognized the cold, hard facts of this situation and with the advice of our medical professionals, have treated this as a war for the very survival of our country. Yet through it all, we have also remained hopeful that through decisive and reasoned action, we will emerge from this global pandemic even stronger and more resilient as a people. Tomorrow, life will change dramatically for Bermuda. The declaration of a state of emergency, the first in over 40 years, and the institution of a shelter-in-place order for 14 days from 6 a.m. this Saturday represents a new and necessary level in our collective war to protect the health and safety of our community. Each of us now has a choice. We can take these days and be selfish, disregard the laws in place to protect all of us, and place yourself and others in jeopardy. We can take these 14 days to engage in unhealthy behavior or binge watch Netflix. 
If we make any of these choices, we will still emerge no better, no stronger, and no wiser than when we began the shelter-in-place order. Instead, let us choose to do what we can and all support each other to use this time in a positive and productive manner. The world post-COVID-19 will be unlike anything we have seen. Some economists are warning that the global economy will be as bad, if not worse, than experienced during the height of the Great Recession. Some of the jobs that have been lost may be lost forever. Some of the skills that have provided an income for ourselves and others may cease to exist. I encourage each of you to use these 14 days wisely. If all of us see this as an opportunity to learn, to grow, to evolve, and to strengthen, we'll be better positioned as a people for a post-COVID-19 world. All, if all you have gained from this time is weight, that will be unfortunate. Take advantage of the Internet's resources, learn a new skill, train, work, grow. Yet growth does not have to be limited to enhancing skills. It can be used to deepen your spirituality, strengthen ties with loved ones, or do those chores around the house that you haven't had time to tackle, or simply use this as a time to refresh, renew, and rejuvenate for the days to come. Someone recently said to me that I had become premier in one of the most difficult times in our country's history, and they remarked that they did not envy the burden that myself or our government has had to collectively bear. I can't say that I have never been more humbled than I am today for the opportunity you have given me to serve. The days ahead may be uncertain. The future may seem darker than light and the work to do seemingly impossible. But I know that I am not alone and none of us in this tiny island are alone. Thank you, be safe, be well, be blessed, and let us all work together to ensure that Bermuda emerges from this a stronger, better, smarter, and positioned to set an example for the world. Thank you, and with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have for any of the five speakers today. Um, with regards to some of the logistics for the shelter in place period, um, I think Mr. Keynes had mentioned yesterday about situations where there are co-parenting families. Um, is it the case that wherever a child is, I guess, at 8 o'clock tonight, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, that's where they're going to be for two weeks? Or is there an opportunity for a child to go between households of parents? Can you see, can address that? We are hoping that families could actually work through that in a matter that is within the law and the guidelines, um, if they can uh, make those arrangements personally. If they cannot do so, Section 3 of the Emergency Powers COVID Shelter in Place Regulation 2020 reads as follows. Section 3, and I shall read in your hearing. For the avoidance of doubt, a minor child of parents who do not live together shall remain at the home where the child is living on the commencement of these regulations at, at the place, excuse me, I'll start again. For the avoidance of doubt, a minor child of parents who do not live together shall remain at the home where the child is living on the commencements until these regulations cease to have effect. In other words, wherever a child is at 8 p.m. tonight, that child must stay there for the next 14 days. And I think you mentioned when you were talking about um, grocery stores. I think you did mention grocery deliveries. Does that mean deliveries are still an option for those, um, those supermarkets that provide that? So this is not for anyone just to say, I'm a taxi driver and I'm going to deliver food. There are specific delivery services and the specific delivery services can indeed 